Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who did this when he found out his wife has been cheating on him with a close friend. Here's the full story with multiple updates. I, 52 male, WW, 50 female, together for 22 years, married 20, 3 kids, 2 young adults, 1 7 years old. 5 years ago the WW had a late life epiphany. Sex was good and enjoyable. We went from 1 to 2 times a month to daily and sometimes if time and responsibilities allowed, twice in the same day. The activities included seductive bears sent to my phone or email, and cute to see stuff, hearts and smileys reminiscent of our earlier days in the relationship before kids. Somewhere in this time, December to January 2018 talks about spicing up the bedroom by bringing another person in the mix. First red flag, it was a guy friend from our cohort that the WW suggested. Noped it hard with the simple reason of not my cup of tea to be bare in the same bed with another guy and my spouse. It got dropped in but articles about poly and open relationships were being dropped on my inbox or links on the phone. I would read them, and vary from non-committal to not interested. A week before Thanksgiving 2018, we're out on a date and the talk about including a third comes up. I ask if this hypothetical third has a name. It's a close friend with whom we spend a lot of time together etc. and with whom the WW has spoken about this idea with already. Pay for the drinks, get in the car and proceed to flip my lid. 1. I never agreed to this. 2. For any such conversation I should have been present and not told after it was decided. 3. F no, literally. The holidays sucked for all but it was one of the best weight loss programs for all adults in the house. Around February 2019 we get our crap together to talk it through. She's repentant and remorseful admits poor judgment and understands why I'm not okay about the deceit, as well as the whole idea. She got it. Sex life took a hit, we managed to find a new pace. At least once a week but the spark and desire were subdued. Earlier this year, a parent that I had a difficult relationship passed unexpectedly. I was there for a plan four days, stayed for 45 and a funeral. My baggage started resurfacing especially some of the treatments that I experienced of being the safe one, the second choice. As I'm starting to deal with this crap milkshake of the soul, WW starts to be withdrawn. Always on electronics, limited conversation and only about the basics. F. I'm at a place to deal with my loss and now this. Okay. I get on her machine after midnight when the house is all quiet, and there's nothing in recent email or on FB and on phone messages. There's activity but nothing that points to coded or otherwise hidden messages. I check the time frames of 2017 to 2018. Bingo. I find sent emails to the friend from her with the same spicy pictures I was getting at the same time. FB Messenger for the same period is full of good mornings, smiley faces, hearts and flirting between them, video chats from 5 to 15 minutes. WW was starting a business and friend would stop by for coffee or lunch daily as he could. At the time he was there to help and advice. Flip of lid. Part 2. The idiot awakens got the 20k volts coursing through me all night. Could not sleep, sit. Just paced. Around 6am, WW wakes and asks what's wrong. I open the laptop lid and show her the highlighted emails with her bare pics to the friend's email. No inbox, just sent files. I asked how would she react if she found out I had pictures of a bare woman on my machine and that they were of a time period covering at least 10 months prior to what I said was a silly mistake. I pointed out that she did lie. She did have at least an emotional affair with the now verified AP and it was deliberate. Trust was lost and any statement from her at this point would be suspect to its truth. The first apologies of the WW ended in the trash can as she started to vomit. I asked why she did not tell me of this four years ago. We would have dealt with this already. I told her I'm taking the day to think about it and sharing because it can happen to anyone. None of us are special, and here I thought it would never happen to me. Today is day of firsts. The outpouring of support and trauma shared is staggering. I find myself glad and sorry that I'm not alone in my experiences. Thank you to all for the advice, comments and suggestions from readings to step-by-step -step playthroughs. I have replied to individuals but it's worth updating all and clarifying some points before the update. She did have a miscarriage that was a bloody affair that we rushed to the ER for, with her soaked in her own blood. It was verified as such by the trauma staff in OBGYN at the hospital. It was early first trimester. No way to tell who the father was. This was early 2018. Got snipped shortly after. Sex life was still on the red hot stage of things. I have heard from several of you that the DNA test route is a good idea. It's yet another truth that has been challenged today. A fair partner is single, has been divorced for at least as long as we were married. Racially we're European stock, he's mostly African American and Native American. 
He's very well-spoken, charming and educated. W.S. was engaged in minority community outreach and education for years as was a P. W.S. nascent business was with an actual storefront. Sure there were spaces that two adults could be intimate in. If there's a will there's a way. AP runs his own consultancy and makes his own hours. Flexible schedule and has small business experience. Offered to help with the startup and was an advisor. Again legitimate reasons to be there plus time. Business was started in the fall of 2015. Storefront opened in winter of 2016. Closed shop spring of 2019. Good idea, bad execution. In retrospect, WS had her mind and focus elsewhere. And yes the more I reread this text the more of a calamity this man was for us. After spending the day in disbelief, anger and Aaron voltage running through me, I came home. My insides are playing death metal while outwardly I whistle easy listening tunes. WS is on the couch collapsed in on herself. She tried to get up to greet me and just I pointed my hands at her. She sits. I grab the chair as far from the couch as I can. I inform her that I'm with one foot out the door. I will decide which direction I move in the relationship based on what she does next. I tell her that since she's the mother of the kids, and out of respect for our time together I will endeavor to keep nastiness on my part to a minimum. I remind her it's more fair than she deserves and it's because of my self-respect, not her actions. Because of her effed up upbringing and the abandonment she experienced, I tell her not to be afraid of me disappearing. I tell her that if leave, she will be explicitly told. I also let her know that her presence in the house is at my discretion at this point. She has luggage and can be told to leave if at any point she disrespects me or tries to lie. We discuss how to tell the kids. She wants to tell them it's the fight from 2018. I remind her how one of the teens stopped speaking to her and how she would be a pariah once again in house. She starts crying and I remind her she did this. I will talk to the kids with her there. She shook her head and cried. In return, to begin with, start with the no contact letter to AP. Start the timeline on paper. Anything not true, we're done right there. A list of passwords to accounts, bank and plastic records. She gets the couch. I will let her know what next. Before I leave the room I asked her who is she. She has become a stranger. The last couple of days have been a blur due mostly to lack of sleep and good friends who made sure I was fed and in a place to be and figure things out. While going through WS's phone, I found her text file with all her passwords to her accounts. Facebook, email accounts, Apple account, etc. So one more piece of intel. I have not been this angry hurt and confused in my adult life. I found all the things that I held as hard truths to be null. It's surreal having the person with whom you build a life with being asked to write a no contact letter to her AP. It's even more surreal for the WS to not argue when I've been asking her to do things. I asked her to also provide me with the affair timeline. Based on what she wrote I would decide on my next steps. This all the morning after. I got myself to work and got sorted there with management about time off. My manager was understanding and gave me no problems. I started going through WS's social media chats with AP and started seeing a pattern of flirting and daily conversations from January 18th to almost June 19th. After that there were more conversations between them but mostly about a project that the two of them have been engaged for a while. There were two dates in the text lineup, on March 19th and one on April 19th. The first was flirting between them where AP was commenting about WS's lips and how he loves kissing her. She replied back with heart emojis and how she could not wait to see him in the morning. This was during the time that I was away on a trip with the two younger kids visiting family. Screenshot number one. The second exchange was WS telling AP that she's sorry for hurting his feelings, but they need to keep it just to the project. Screenshot number two. Send both screenshots to WS via text and ask that she include those in the timeline. She starts explaining over text that they're not what they seem. I text her to just put the explanation in the timeline. Finish a couple tasks at work and head home. WS is sitting on the couch reading a book. I ask her how the timeline is coming along. She looks up and says she will work on it when she has time in the evening. She looked like she was crying but is putting on a brave face. I'm irritated by this. I can't interpret her stance. It could be I don't want to do this, it's not important, or can't face it, or you're not the one on charge. This is not a game. Send a text to my friend, letting her know that I need an exit and shelter in place. Got confirmation and ETA. Grab my laptop, chargers, cables, etc., toiletries and bug out bag. Get the text from friend that says ETA is 2 minutes as I asked. Walk into the room with WS and ask when the timeline will be done. She says she's going to work on it that evening. I let her know that she can concentrate better without me there and that I will be back home when the timeline is complete. 
and exit stage right. She's left mouth agape as I walk out. I had a timeline in my email inbox in 40 minutes. On the very first of the versions, half of the timeline were apologies, excuses and reasons that made no sense. It took several days of edits and pointing the inconsistencies in the narrative. I wanted to drive home the time this was hidden so I send her a document that I asked her to fill out because of her jumping around in her story. It was really a list of all the months from September of 17 to June of 22. She started her timeline from September of 17 with the first set of spicy pics she sent me and continued on from there, with focus after the blowout we had, when she announced her desire to open the marriage up and have an affair with the AP. She felt ashamed and sorry for her actions in November 18th and did not speak to AP until after the holidays. Sometime in January 18th, while we were working towards reconciliation, she started speaking with him again and he was supportive of her and understood where she stood. He asked her if she would like to drop out of their project and she said no as it was very important to her as a project in general. During that time, they continued to spend time together but would no longer tell me about it. When I had noticed this I had asked AP why he was no longer around as much, not that I minded, and he said that he was spending more time with his son who was now staying with him. In providing support for their soft breakup that was our fight and almost breakup in November 18th with WS, they got closer, rekindled and continued with their EA. The highlight was the texts of the screenshot I caught where the two of them apparently shared an intimate kiss for the first time, sometime on March 19th. After that they continued having encounters when they could that were mostly making out and some petting over the clothing. WS apparently was feeling quilt and shame and broke it off with what was the aftermath and the conversation that got caught in April 19th in text. When I had a cohesive timeline, I send it to the AP and asked him what he had to say for himself. He responded with how sorry he was and that he never should have engaged in that relationship and how sorry he was. He would tell me anything else, but I needed to find out what happened. Told him that WS and I were talking about a sensual misconduct complaint against him. Truth was we had never talked about it, but I knew the organization he worked for and the project the two of them were involved in and how damaging any such publicity would be. He sang like a canary and gave the WS up without a fight. Right under the bus, he admitted that she approached him, that he knew my reservations but thought I could be open-minded. WS was to him a friend who truly understood the social issues of his life and felt he could speak to her with an open heart because she understood him. Yeah, I know. I had the same reaction when I read that. He was sorry for the damage and was ashamed for lying and keeping it a secret. I called him a snake in the grass and how I was not there to give him absolution. From their timelines, I gathered that they were on and off and confused as to when it was just an EO or just working on a project and even the PIA parts were strained. With him leading most of the time and her being active at first then passive towards the end. He said he was sorry, I told him to keep the F away from us, at least while I'm in the picture. Getting enough information between WS and AP, I think I got a pretty good idea of the truth to what happened. It was an emotional affair that got started from the WS attraction to AP. His role in pursuing and in some cases manipulating the WS. The lying that they both engaged during the time it was supposedly over. Lies, betrayal and more lies. Had the talk with a couple of lawyers who pretty much said the same things. The most brutally honest one was the last one I saw who up front told me that the postnuptial agreement I was looking for would not make sense in the any of the US because of how long we had been together. There would be no alimony but the support that I would have to be would be more than half my paycheck. To his recommendation, it was not the worst he had seen so he would rather we spend the money on counseling versus legal fees. Either way if we were to divorce the process would cost as much as the postnup so not a win there either. The night before my return home, got quite drunk with my friend at her house, where three bottles of wine died for our sins and my body no so gently reminded me that I'm 52 not 25. She's one of my best friends, even though attractive as hell, never made a move as I was always involved. She's also good for the ego and took care of me emotionally and physically when I could not eat. Nothing like a Valkyrie telling you to eat or else. During my time away from home, I kept in touch with the kids and offered to listen to anything they had to say. Seven-year-old was the hardest to speak with as they cannot understand but know something is wrong. The day before my return home, visited over the house and had the conversation with the WS. I set what I expect on the table. 1. She's to get a job. Enough living on my dime and saving the world one social program at a time. There will be no reconciliation for a year. 2. During this time we're in counseling, individual and couple, so I can get answers as to why. 
also because no matter what, we're tied together because of the kids and need to deal with each other. 3. There will be no physical contact. Bought a bunk bed for the 7-year-old's room so she can move in, and I get the bedroom. Meanwhile I get the couch, which is fine. 4. Because of all this she has caused me to question what relationships are. Not sure if this relationship is I want or if WS is the right person for me anymore. I will date casually during this year if I choose. If she decides to do the same, we go straight to separation, amicably. 5. I will conduct myself with dignity and compassion. I could go scorched earth but will not do to the damage it will cause the kids. She is now a secondary priority. Kids are my first and will remain so. I had a full confession out of both AP and WS and even though there's still fog and shame, I know enough of what happened. Even if I don't know all the truth, I know enough to feel I'm right in my decisions. I also know that I will check the color if WS says the sky is blue for a long time to come. I made edits to this doc after falling asleep on it out of exhaustion. To all of you, thank you for support, wisdom, perspective and reaching out. Edit, got the STD testing, waiting on results. To be honest, they had an affair in their heads. Once they started the idea and then agreed to start acting on it. They had an affair and kept it secret. They both admitted to it. With or without the sex, they betrayed trust and friendship. Maybe I was spared the indignity of being cuckolded, maybe not. The kids are my priority, not her. I'm not certain on how far the PIA went. Any sex would be insult to injury. They decided on an idea to do something with each other in secret. The P is how far they got, how strong their conviction. The thing is that if you have a thought and act on it, it makes it easier every time after to do the same. So what I found is what they were thinking, what behaviors despite the possible damage around them, they were engaged. And to me it's enough. The part of finding out more of what happened is how you now see the red flags you ignored in the past. The ride of the skiff and the tsunami continues. AP has been working on WS since 2014. Found out that this is his hobby. He has moved around different groups of people with the community, and couples seem to combust into divorce. Also found out he's ex-military, with a specialty in counterintelligence. All these years and we never knew this. It was an interesting night at the pub. His tactics are always slow, methodical, under the radar, infiltrate, subvert, divide and spoil. The friend of a friend who lived it, was in tears and his WS affair with the same AP was in 2010. I found out the following over the last month, how he moved in on the WS by spending time and becoming her best friend, confidant, adventure partner and eventual affair partner. How he exploited character weaknesses and stresses between WS and myself as we started and closed a business and all that goes with it to make his move on her. How he added to the strife from this affair at the time, and how it lead to spousal alienation. The isolation of the WS from the teens which lead to our teens rebelling and an awkward age becoming more difficult as well as the poison of a serious secret between two people just festering. As expected by all, the emotional affair was also physical. All but intercourse by the time WS approached me with her talk of opening up the relationship as a way to legitimize what they were already doing and taking it to the next level. I'm sure that at some point in the future I will receive private pictures from an unknown account with the immortalizing of some of their acts together. AP had plans for the WS too. Getting married, meeting his swinger friends etc. Maybe she felt sorry for me. Maybe she snapped out of the haze. Maybe that was a unicorn in a meadow full of rainbows when she broke it of after my crap fit. The affair petered out soon after our November 18th with some emotional blackmail from the AP towards the WS and her surprisingly holding her ground. But they both acted as all was well, till the pandemic at which point she broke all contact. Both lied back then. He lied a month ago during D-Day when I confronted him, keeping up the story. It has taken me a month of carrot and stick to get truth out of WS, or most of it and it sucks. Not sure I want the whole truth. I had my first anxiety attack the night she told me all of what she is willing to tell me. I'm not sure if reconciliation is possible but need to go through the motions as I figure out how to prepare before the next time happens and get the F out of this. I'm in the process of rebuilding my damaged relationship with the older kids and spending more time with the youngest. I'm waiting on the paternity tests to come back, thank you all for the suggestion. But even if the kids are not mine, I'm not trusting them around WS based on the way she treated them during and even after the affair. Either way, the young adults are more pissed at WS than I am and would have voted WS off the island already. The good thing is her BS is now over, so I can actually talk to them again and not get sabotaged at every word. They see through her BS as well. I have set a reconciliation date of next Father's Day. I'm keeping my word as I need to rebuild mine and my kids' world into a stable one and not the crap show it was been. 
am doing okay for the most part, feel I dodged a bullet back then. It could have been one of those cases where no matter what I did, I would be the bad guy or even who knows, even dead or in jail. W.S. swears up and down that it was a mistake and how horrible she is and how she will spend the rest of her life making it up to me. I have the timeline and letter from her stating that during the time we've been married she had an affair, that I know of, and that I never abused her or the kids in any way. Won't mean much but at least is more proof than I said, she said. I have given sealed copies of the letter to my childhood friend who has proven his trust over the years, plus one with my legal docs. Once WS lands the job, we're getting a post-nuptial. It sucked, and we'll do so for a bit. But I now know why things were the way they were and that I need to work to get out of this tunnel to live my remaining years in peace and happiness. Cheers to all and once again thank you all for the support, advice and wisdom you've shared. Edit, I know she's lying. When I confronted AP recently he blocked all contact so I lost access to chats and files on social media. I have some screenshots but not enough. If it's reported, it's a consensual relationship between two adults. It was not abuse or any form of sensual assault. All the POS has to do is provide some of their pics together to show consent. It may make a stink, even if WS reports it, but it's a messy situation gone wrong and most places frown upon that. I will be labeled as the jealous husband and she is agitator who started an affair and is covering her tracks by blaming AP. He's out of my life. Once I'm out of WS's it will be even better. They can both go to hell and romantic ride as far as I care after that. I'm not really looking to reconcile. More like finding a common ground and space as we're tied due to the kids. She's still their mother and especially the youngest is still very attached to her. One of the conditions for the WS is to stop activities of the type of Save the Spotted Garden Snail, or whatever social cause of the day comes up and get a job commensurate to her skill and education level. She has an advanced degree that she, meaning we, paid for that was a strain on time and finances that she never used. She can now contribute to the raising of the kids and not be a tick on my back. WS claims it was a coercive relationship. He did things she did not like but kept going back. I rolled my eyes on this too. After I confronted AP, he blocked us everywhere. So all I have is phone records, text screenshots and what she says happened. Yes, there's ton of details that I'm abbreviating for the post. She was in a physical affair, willingly with someone else. Broke trust, destroyed honesty, demolished her family and hurt her children. Even as she's omitting most of the iceberg, what she admitted to is enough. It has nothing to do with me or how I was in our relationship. She bears sole responsibility for her actions. I'm fixing what I can for the priority in my life which is the kids. The devastation that has happened with the young adult kids is staggering. They have been functionally without a mother since 2017. WS and the children were isolated from each other. I was working full-time at my regular job and business plus a part-time gig to make ends meet and keep a roof over our head. I was isolated from the kids as well. I wrongly thought they were being cared for and their needs were being met. Still made time for them. But truth is I was exhausted and drained. They think I abandoned them all alone and that is a big thing for us to overcome. But working on it. I need this time to build some bridges with them and make sure they will be okay with what is to come. Intellect and adult recognition of events is at least on my side with them. I wish I had pulled the plug in 2018 and not believe WS. I get to do better now and at least protect the kids from her neglect. If the kids get lost or flounder, there is no life for me. Neither of us were virgins when we met. I just made a commitment to us, physically, mentally, emotionally. Respected her and honored her. With her actions, she proved that I'm just another piece of meat, among other things. So even if we resume sex, which is part of the love bombing attempts, she's no longer someone special. Just a piece of tail. It's her body. Before she was sacred. She reduced our relationship to transactional one. Not what we agreed upon. Now, she can do as she pleases. Just not with me. The ease of lying and her having a taste for it is far more serious than her getting her willies met. It casts doubts on the past and makes the future uncertain. She's a spent card. My task is to make sure all the kids are okay and for the older ones to learn that living with honor and self-dignity is important. WS is the example to avoid. My other task is to limit her effect on the kids. We no longer share his values as hers are suspect and corrupted. This is the part that has me up at night and frightened if I fail at it. This would be the failure of my life if I can't fix it with the kids. Her reckoning has not come yet. I won't be there for her when it comes. I'm sorry for her but it's what she chose. No malice, no hate. Just disappointment. His time in the service was verified by one of his previous victims. AP is a pro at this. I'm sure that there will be more of this in social circles, which by the way, he's good at compartmentalizing. 
I know and I've heard how jealous and controlling I am behind closed doors from some folks. So I was being set up as the patsy, most likely at the same time as he set sights on WS. Evil and vile stuff. You would be surprised what a whisper in the right ears will do when amplified by a big mouth. She started a friendship with someone she allegedly was not attracted to, having fantasies of a trio with him, then a physical affair and relationship with him. When she talks about the affair fog, she claims feelings, digital flirting, talks of a weird future of him living with us or even marrying her. But when she talks about acts, kissing, dry humping, her performing oral sex on him, posing for picture for him, she claims coercion and feeling that her boundaries were always being pushed. Also some emotional blackmail but she's not sure. She willingly walked into it. She does not know why she acted against her marriage, kids and family. But it was her doing these things. When she asked to open the relationship, it was the first she realized I was not going for it and it meant the end of us if she did. She then decided to make it appear as a maybe instead of telling me the whole truth of their affair. Message and phone records show a drop in communications, with the occasional joke but then contact drops of by 2020. It took over a month of carrot and stick to get to the truths I have. What I know is enough. Her mind was caught and she gave her body willingly. When she approached me on Nov. 18 to ask for the open relationship, my reaction apparently broke her out of it. I don't know. She betrayed her own values and hurt her kids. It's been over 7 months since D-Day. It's been a rough time with the expected up and downs. The problem with turbulence is that it turns you around and you need to work hard to stay true to a course. This is where methods such as Grey Rock or 180 help, or you can let it turn you where it may. End of the day it's all about choices. I'm still reading the subreddit and still use it as a way to both validate or understand some aspect better. Occasionally I find I'm dead wrong. It happens. I have understood each one of us to be different and although the overall process seems to follow similar patterns, the process is not the same for all. Ironically we're all unique in our common woes. My takeaways from the process so far have been that the cheating took away my agency, my right to make choices for myself. I did not agree to give up my agency to WS or to AP. Because of that whatever relationship I had with WS is gone, dead, Christmas tree on the curb waiting for pickup. In my case, WS is full of genuine remorse and willing to put the work into a new relationship with me. Better I have an Oscar-worthy performance in the house. There's also some truths that have come up since D-Day that changed the surprise of why this happened to how it happened when the right person able to exploit a situation came along. AP is a serial cheater in our case. He targets married women in long-term relationships and exploits relationship weaknesses. This was verified right away. He was able to create the illusion that WS was engaged in a fun activity no worse than driving above the speed limit or having that extra donut in the office. WS was able to see, after the fog lifted, that what was offered by AP and what she had in our old relationship differed in quality, and decided to hide the affair and go through the motions of denial and distancing from the events. Had AP not been a predator, or WS not aware enough of it, a different outcome and talking about co-parenting and asset division and all the options and choices with that path and course of actions would be posted instead. A different bearing on the compass. Still an option though. WS made choices though. Choices I disagreed with. Choices that were hurtful and betrayed two decades of common life. Choices that negated me as a partner. There were also reason that a P could exploit WS and her relationship with me in our marriage. We had grown complacent in our old relationship. We had a calcified communication process where neither of us would say what was wanted or needed to be said. We would rather avoid conflict than speak freely. We both believed that we cared for, hell loved each other as habit rather than actual engagement of feeling. WS's Ia and eventual P were an extreme case to find out all of this though. Do not recommend. We knew that something was wrong for a long time between us. We were unsure of the normalcy or abnormality of what it was. Lost honest communication with each other created a chasm. I was just as responsible for this as WS, but my choices were different. Maybe I was lucky that the right or wrong person did not come my way with the right look and needs. It could be me here talking about being a wayward myself. So here we are in a process of deciding if a new relationship is possible. Not reconciling the old. I cannot go back to who I was in that relationship nor do I want who WS was. We're talking again. Honestly, freely and openly discussing difficult subjects. MC has helped with some communication patterns and ground rules. I see with personal demons in those dark corners of the mind. The questions asked by a dear friend were, if WS were to somehow disappear from life, freak accident, black hole, alien abduction, 
How would I feel about her? I figured out for myself that I did not hate WS. Hurt and upset yes, but not hate. Still saw her as human with deep flaws, even that I had care and compassion for her. Second question, could I live with those flaws? My answer after a lot of thinking has been, I'm flawed. I cannot live with my own flaws and shortcomings. How am I expecting someone else to work on themselves when I need to work on me? So, even though legally still married, I find myself in a place of finding who I am, changing what I don't like or encouraging what I like within me. WS is also finally putting the work that has been needed for her to deal with trauma and PTSD from her past. She's also working on herself and is realizing that this is new. The old is gone and not going back to it. Everything is tentative. Any decisions are to go through discussion, to stay or leave and the expectation is each party is to explain until the other party understands. There is no ownership or theft or subversion of agency. Lots of work to do and final conversation is on Father's Day of 2023, a year from when I set my conditions. Thank you all who have been in touch with your support and comments. It has been a good boost when morale was low. We each have the strength to do what is needed but we're all here to remind each other of that. The end goal is to find our happiness in the end, whatever that means for each of us. She knew what she was doing. She's aware of the damage that it has caused. She took my right to choose from me. If that is what she wants, my choice is the door for her. There's a finite time on this planet for each of us. I'm aware on how and what I've missed and what I want. For that I'm unapologetic. I made sure to take the time I needed to visit places that I always wanted, alone. Guinness tastes much better at its source than imported. WS is no damsel. She knew what she was doing. AP's part was encouraging all those feelings and thoughts. I got a chance to meet with another betrayed spouse of the same AP. Those two did not figure out who and what. A once jovial and lighthearted fellow was a shell of the person he used to be because of his WS's affair and their divorce. F the AP. He's not winning this one. She never talked to me about her feelings at the time, and she lied about the seriousness of her involvement and has left herself exposed to blackmail from him in the future. I'm only taking responsibility for me and my actions in this. The special relationship we had is gone. She's just like any other girlfriend or non-serious relation I've had in the past before her. It's up to her to be more than just somebody that I used to know. I care about WS as the mother of our kids as well as a person. The hypothetical question my friend asked about her absence was illuminating for me. Even if we find our paths differing, I still will care about the person. No, I'm not about to forget the betrayal and what this person showed they're capable of. Neither is she going to forget that she is directly responsible for her world being turned upside down and looking at being a single mother with two adult kids and one preteen. True reconciliation if that is where we're heading does not start for me until this Father's Day, a year from where we had the talk on what is expected. I'm not expecting this to be smooth. I still have okay days and bad ones from the experience. We're keeping the health professionals busy here, plus set times daily that we talk and discuss. We've not resumed any other relations except being civil to each other and talking. Hell, we've even joked with each other. But there's no physical relation right now and we're still in separate beds. For brevity I've left out details. Thank you for pointing this out for clarification. WS is not a possession. She's free to go whenever she wants. Same applies to me. Starting a new relationship, for me, is starting from the basics. Who is she really? Don't forget, we have kids together. Even if I walk out right now, we're connected via those kids that we have. We're not dating. We're establishing new ways of communicating and relating to each other. She effed up. Having a stale marriage was not a reason to have an affair. That is on her. Not debating that. I need to do right by me and by the kids. WS not having the emotional maturity is not mine nor the kids fault. Doing the work to spare all of us the drama is a responsibility though. I do not trust her. She made some conscious bad choices. The onus of proof is on her that her word is good. Not an easy task. Not because I'm being punitive but because she destroyed her credibility with me. I'm also aware that anything in the future will be but a shadow of what we had. I do not hate my WS. She was my friend for half my life at this point and I hers. We shaped each other the way shared life does. If during this time, WS and I decide we don't make sense then at least we part ways amicably and with the space clear between us. My time away from WS took a couple of weeks and traveled, showed me that I could find someone, start again. But I could never see myself in something as serious as life building or as intense. Companionship, sure. Maybe that is all that I may accomplish with WS at this point as well. Too soon to tell. She and I are tied together because of our kids. We have a lot of work ahead. Personally and with each other. Either way, it's work worth doing if nothing else. To be better than the people we were before, regardless of the outcome. 
she is in therapy. I do not want to be in a relationship with W.S., who acted that way. I also do not want to be the person who was in that relationship. The calculated risk is of two people changing aspects of themselves while looking to establish a new relationship while avoiding the pitfalls of what caused the previous relationship to fail. The degree of the relationship really will depend on trust and honesty, both hard currency and in little supply right now. So yeah, complicated stuff. Finding my individualism again has been good. I took time and traveled alone. More travel is planned as well as looking at options to be in another country if a remote work opportunity manifests. I did sacrifice happiness in the past and it got me nowhere. It was ignored or not appreciated. It's one of the aspects that I disliked about myself in the past. Not being selfish but not being foolish either. Self-care is indeed a big part of this stage for me. WS wanted an open relationship and knew whom she was thinking of dating, but I objected. I was initially led to believe that it was just a whim and four years later found out that it was an Ia that led to a brief PA. WS asking for the open marriage was according to her a way to bring it in the open. When I objected to the opening of the marriage she realized what she was doing and stopped the PA and eventually the EA. She lied, gaslighted, obfuscated, occulted what she could. I still found out. She missed every chance to be honest with me, because reasons, mostly BS. Between the time of the affair and when I found out, she tried to be a better partner while becoming more distant and reserved with me, being more attentive but at the same time emotionally unavailable. It was a rough time in general for us and I was misinterpreting her behavior due to circumstances not affair withdrawal. AP would have been happy to continue the affair. I suspect he had bigger plans for WS about lifestyles and how WS fit into those. Not a pleasant future. I have not dated anyone nor do I wish to. I'm not in my right mind to be someone else's partner right now, nor do I wish to burden anyone with my baggage. I need time to take care of me for a bit. WS is full of remorse and expresses her sorrow at the pain and hurt she has caused. She understands the lost trust and that it will be a while if ever that she's seen as a person with whom I can be intimate physically and emotionally. But divorce is a financial disaster and separation a family one. These conditions can change in the future, so temporary. AP is a serial cheater. That was verified over the past summer. Not a good person to know. I have not dated or seen anyone on purpose. Even before the WS's affair I did have opportunities that I chose not to pursue because I wanted to keep my word. I'm also very aware of people waiting on the sidelines. Female friends from our social groups that have made it all too clear that they're available when I'm good and ready. Companionship is not a concern. Right now my focus is on taking care of myself. I entwine my life by choice with someone I thought was worth it. She was not. Anything from here on with WS will be but a shadow to what we had. Civil and cordial because she is the mother of our kids and I do respect myself and value my opinion of myself. She lied. Yes, she engaged in an affair. She made those choices. In my case, I was never part of her thought process. She exhibited little to no concern on my well-being and our relationship. She has expressed remorse and regret. Will she do it again? I don't know. It is now part of her behavioral repertoire. She can choose to be like this, someone not fully cognizant of her desires and actions, just acting on impulse. Or she can do the work she needs to on herself. It is also her life and her time. Her choice, my choosing to express compassion has nothing to do with just her process. My being aware with who I am and how I see myself as is far more important. I get to live with myself 24-7. I get to choose to be the person I want, or at least try. Her and AP's actions don't dictate who I am. I may stay with her and she will either be honest or not. I may leave and find a different person to be with, that may be honest or not. But I'm now doing so with a different awareness. Yes there is pleasure in life. But if anything it is just part of life. Same as sorrow. Not feeling and not being aware is a bigger waste than choosing the next happiness high. At least to me. OP. It's disheartening to observe how some individuals invest significant effort into extramarital affairs instead of strengthening their marriages or relationships. Your spouse had alternative paths available to her that didn't involve infidelity. If she was unhappy, she should have honestly communicated with you and collaborated with you to address the issues. However, the logical next step should have been seeking therapy. Unfortunately, she didn't choose this route and resorted to infidelity. If neither of the options was viable, she could have pursued a divorce instead. I genuinely hope that she is undergoing therapy and focusing on self-improvement now. I have faith that you will make the best decisions for yourself and your children, enabling you to rebuild and create a better future, whatever that may look like. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.